So this is the Dursey back bag and I did a video all about it when I first got it. You can see that it's pretty compact. I mean, it's about the size of my head, I guess. Um, but it holds a lot. So this is what I take with me whenever I'm doing sort of art on the go. So when my son has gymnastics classes or I go on an airplane or I know I'm gonna be sitting around somewhere, it's not so big that it takes up a ton of room. I can wear it just like a crossbody bag of any kind. You know, it's not super heavy. It fits in the car. It's all those kinds of things. So let's take a peek inside. So in the center pocket is where I tend to keep most of my stuff and I do put pouches in so that I can keep things a little bit separate and you'll see I have two extremely large pen pouches in here. It's kind of amazing. It's a little bit of a Mary Poppins bag that way. So if you haven't seen my video about the Darcy Beck bag, you should check it out. There are tons of pockets, lots of hiding places. I really haven't even utilized all the pockets in this one because I just didn't need to. So here are the things that were not in the pouches. Let's talk about the pouches in a minute. Um, this is just from a hotel, obviously. Scrap paper is always really useful. This is a pocket palette that was a gift to me and I love it. It is the tiniest little thing and it holds so many colors. So I have core watercolors in here that are made by Golden. And you can see I've got my little pans. It has its mixing palette here. And really this is enough watercolor to get me for quite a long time. And it's a really nice palette. I've obviously laid out the palette here so I know exactly what I've got. So I actually have, believe it or not, four books with me. And that may seem like a lot, but one of the things is when you have wet pages, you wanna leave a book open and you wanna work in another book. So one of these books is just a really simple sewn binding. You can see this, this is actually a binding that I teach in my sketchbook class where I also teach you how to keep um, a sketchbook. Uh, and you can see it has an envelope in the center for collage paper. And I don't have a lot of collage paper in here. I probably used a lot of it on the trip, so I should probably replenish some of that. But that's a really nice feature of this book. And again, it's just a really simple stitch binding that I teach you how to do. Uh, it's just a pamphlet style stitch in the class. Then here are two books, and these actually, I have a YouTube video on how to make these. This is a no-sew book. But what you can hear from that crackling is before I went on my trip, I just added collage paper in here and this gives me something to react to so that I just don't have a blank page that I'm starting with. So everything here is just random scraps that were sitting on my desk. In fact, I'm not sure which way this book goes. I haven't done anything in this one. Um, this one I've worked in a little bit. Some things I like, some things I hate, you know, just like random stuff playing around. This is my favorite in here. Um, and again, the rest of it is just collage. It's a mixture of different papers, different weights of paper. Don't love this one so much, but you can see I jump around um, and just, you know, practice trying to like bring things together. This is a great skill actually as to how to bring things together. This is a watercolor mole skin. So the paper in here is watercolor paper. Um, and this is the kind of thing that I teach in my sketchbook class. It's much more sort of traditional sketching, I guess you could say. It's sort of looking at things around you. So like you go to something and you draw a picture of it as much as anything else, right? Um, and lots of half finished stuff in here. This is not a very done notebook. Um, but again, when I feel like sort of sketching more normally instead of doing abstract or mixed media stuff, I can reach for this. And all of these are, again, so small. Look how they stack together. Paint palette, extra paper. You know, it's a pretty small little bunch. So let's get into the pouches. So pouch number one, and this is a pouch that I made. I think it's really fun. It's basically, um, this is cork fabric and you cut it with your scan and cut and then you put the, and you basically see the lining from inside. So it's kind of a cool idea. Okay, this is just pen, 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 pens. So let's try to, let me try to divide these up into categories. That'll make it a little easier. Okay, by category, you can now see, I have two water brushes. Why two? Well, I guess I'm always worried, like what if something happens to one that I have a backup? So, and they're lightweight and easy, so I don't worry about having two of them. Um, these are all, they're different brands. Two of these are Faber-Castell and one is a Sakura Koi coloring brush pen, but they're all brush pens. Let's see. 
You can see that there, it's got a brush tip. Oops, and this has a brush tip too. The big difference is gonna be that the um, Paper Castell ones are made with pigment ink, so they shouldn't run. I'm not sure there's any water in here. Let's see. Um, they shouldn't run when water touches them, but the Koi ones are watercolor pens, so it should run. Well, so neither's running at all right now. But theoretically on watercolor paper, it will do a little bit of a run so you can get a little bit of a sketch in there. Let me grab a little piece of, well, I'll just do it in the book, who cares? Is this the one that had some water in it? A Little bit, there you go. So on watercolor paper, you can see it runs. You still see the original marker lines, but it means that you can like draw something Let's see, my incredible cube here, right? And then I can shadow the cube by just pulling the color out a little bit. So that's why it's fun to have some brush pens. And then of course, the nice thing about the pigment pens is they don't run. So if you are watercoloring, then you're not worried about it. And this is what I mean, by the way, about leaving the books open that I talked about before. This is wet, so I don't wanna close it. I'm gonna leave it open to dry. Okay, then I have a big fat permapake. This is my favorite black marker from Secor of America. It has two tips. You can see it has that chisel tip, fat one, and then a little narrow um, bullet tip. It's really versatile. It goes over anything, goes on top of acrylic paint, very permanent on top of stuff. So love that. And by the way, I should note that like these are two different grays and you can see how wildly different they are. One is very blue and one is much more gray. This is a fancy fountain pen for when I feel like doing fancy fountain pen stuff. Um, you can see the, you can see the nib there, right there. Um, these are ancient scarlet lime pens, which are, they're basically like black ballpoint pens, but they write on top of, well, they don't, this one doesn't write on top of anything. It may be garbage test your pens people and throw them away if they don't work. Okay, sadly, that pen is gone. Let's see if this one works. There you go. And these ones right on top of acrylic paint and on top of collage material, which is obviously important to me. Then I have a wide array of Micron pens of different sizes. Here is an 03, an 08, they're all black. That is my color that I work with, another 08. 005 and 02. I tend not to like the really skinny ones. Like the 005, I rarely use it. Um, and the 01. But the nice thing about this is, so for example, on, on this page that I did, one of the things you'll notice is that the different lines right? Done with a marker as opposed to done with a pen. And it creates a nice contrast and nice variety in your work. You know what I mean? So that all the lines aren't exactly the same, which is what happens when you use a single pen for everything. Then I have a mechanical pencil so that I don't have to have a sharpener with me. These are gel pens and these are moonlight pens specifically by Sakura. And the thing I like about them is that they are opaque so they'll go on top of anything, right? Acrylic paint, whatever, and they are opaque. However, they are not waterproof, so they do have to be a top layer if you use them. I think you can see some gel pen. This is gel pen, this is gel pen. Mm, this might be gel pen. Okay, then I do have a white one because I love, um, this is not a Moonlight, this is just a white Jelly Roll pen. Um, and I have a bunch of white pens actually. These are discontinued. <laughs> I'm just gonna weep quietly to myself. Um, so these are the water-based, you can still find the oil-based ones, I don't like them. Um, but these are the water-based paint pen Sharpies. Love them, I will use them until they die, which they will. And my new replacement pen that I've been using to replace it is the Uni Pasca. This is the white one, and this particular tip you can see right here is the PC1MR, the pin type tip. And that's what it looks like. And it's a nice um, opaque, you gotta shake it, shake it, shake it. If you haven't used it, shake it. There you go. And it's a nice opaque white pen with a tiny tip. Now paint pens can be really tricky to use on an airplane. So that's another reason that the gel pens are great because I don't want a big mess from the pressure in the airplane messing with my paint pen. So I often will bring out the gel pens. So you can see that everything, 
I mean, I could just honestly put a rubber band around. It doesn't fit in my hand, but it does all fit into the pouch. Okay, second pouch. What's this all about? So this is another pouch I made. This one has a flat bottom, unlike this one, which um, doesn't have a flat bottom. So this one won't stand up. But this one will stand up on its own, which is quite nice when you just want to have it open on your work desk and not have everything spill out. The other thing that's nice about the fact that it stands up by itself is that you can tip everything. There you go. So I can tip everything up, right? And I just fold it over the edge. And now basically I have like a cup. I don't know if it looks like a cup, but it, a container in which my pens are standing up and not sort of flying and dripping all over. And this can be really useful on something that's moving like a train or something else so that your things aren't rolling all over your little table. Okay. Or it, even in your car, if you're doing it, you can put it on your dashboard and it makes it a little bit easier. Okay. So in here, what do we have? So I have a ton of these Posca pens and the reason I brought them is I wanted some form of basically acrylic paint. And that's what your Posca pen is gonna bring to the party. So it's gonna write on top of collage material, on top of anything else that you do, and it will stay wet for a little bit so that you can smudge it and mess with it, especially when you have collage involved and there's a layer of medium on top of everything. So if I come in here, you know, and do this incredible squiggle. I can leave it like that, but I can also get my finger involved, you know, and basically now I've smudged out the squiggle because so much of this is covered with gel medium. And so it just lets it stay long, even long, say wet, stay long. It lets it stay wet a little bit longer. So you have some working time. So it almost becomes pink finger, it almost becomes paint-like and, you know, it's all contained in this little pen. So that's really nice. And it's a great reason to have the Poscas with you or any paint pen that's going to be nice and liquidy and stay for a while. Okay. Then I have a Yoohoo glue stick. I generally don't believe in glue sticks. Yoohoo is the only stick I will use. It absolutely is the only stick that sticks. And this is for any of those little collage pieces that I want to use. Or like if I pick up anything interesting in my travels. Then I have a bunch of this uh, pencil. So this is a Stabilo pencil, Stabilo All pencil. And this is super water reactive and super black. So if I just take, oh, my water brushes got put away. So even on this paper, you can see that the Stabilo runs really nicely. So that's a fun pencil to play with. And then I have two China markers, which are absolutely not water reactive and will draw on anything. And these are really fun China markers because these are from Listo. And you just screw this to get the um, China marker to come out instead of the kind where you have to like unwrap it, which I always mess up. So I've got a black and a white. And you can see they both leave, well, you can't see this one because I don't have a dark surface. Here you go. And you can see that they just leave a really nice, if I push really hard, um, it's a very white line. So um, that's sort of traveling light. I think I might have a, yes, I do. I have a spray bottle hidden away. Ta-da! Tucked into this pocket right here. So I have a spray bottle of water in here, which is how I fill these right when I'm sitting in a seat or I'm in my car or I'm somewhere where there isn't water. And it's also how I can activate the watercolors when I want the watercolors to work for that. So just a little spray bottle of water, super useful. And yes, this makes it through TSA on your carry-on. It's a small enough amount of water, but you could also just fill it in the bathroom as well. And again, all of this stuff just fits right back into this pouch. I suppose I could throw the water bottle in here too. Um, so when I'm ready to clean up, it's super easy. There is a divided pocket in here. So I put the books on one side of the pocket. And then on the other side, in goes the two pouches. Ooh. And then zip it up, put these back where they came from, buckle it, 
and I'm ready to go. So I hope you enjoy this peek into my bag, seeing what I take with me. Uh, if you want more great content, I hope you'll check out the art membership that I offer over at balzerdesigns.com backslash classroom. That's classroom with a capital C. I'd love to see you over there. And membership is a fun way to get tons of great art content at a really great price. So see you later. Yeah.